Good morning, everyone. I want to thank everybody for coming out this morning and uh, being part of the uh, Fargo Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. How many folks uh, were able to come to our public meeting uh, last night? I see some faces that were at the meeting. Awesome. We had a really good, good meeting last night. Sure. It was our first public meeting, um, and we had a lot of uh, great dialogue with uh, a broad range of, of people from, from older to, to very small young kids. It was pretty exciting. Um, and so one of the things I know we want to talk about today is, is kind of how that public meeting went. But what I want to first uh, jump into when we start talking about the comprehensive plan update uh, is go over once again uh, um, the funding for the uh, comprehensive plan itself came from a Department of Energy uh, grant. It was Energy Efficiency Conservation Block Grant. And so one of the major focuses of this uh, uh, plan has to be dealing with uh, energy conservation. So that's one of the themes that we're going to continue to see throughout the document itself. But um, one of the, uh, the major elements of a comprehensive plan is establishing that vi vision for the city. And uh, as I alluded to, uh, it was pretty exciting to uh, hear a lot of the comments from uh, people last night about what their vision for our community is. It uh, definitely uh, was uh, uh, across the board in terms of things they wanted to see our community uh, move forward to in, in the next 20 years. Um, we do have our consultant team with us today from BNIM. And uh, maybe the best thing to do is just, just go around the table and let everybody introduce themselves so we can uh, uh, get that out of the way right at first off. So maybe we'll start here with, with Bob. Am I on here? Yeah. Uh, Bob Berkebile, BNIM Architects. <laughs> I'm Zach Flanders, BNIM Architects and Planners. <laughs> I'm Grace Johnson with the Home Builders Association. I'm Laura McDaniel from NDSU Historic Preservation Society. Craig Whitney with the Chamber. Steve Stoner, Park Company Realtor. Joe Nigg, Fargo Moore Head Council of Government. I'm Tiffany Zielinski. I'm with the Economic Development Corporation here for Kevin McLean. Brenda Derrick. I'm with the City of Fargo Engineering Department. Nicole Crutchfield, City of Fargo Planning Department. Jeremy Gordon, City of Fargo Transportation Engineer. Bob Stein, City of Fargo Planning. Ron Sorbog, a small business owner with my wife and also Fargo Park Board Commissioner and uh, North Dakota State Senator. <laughs> Mike Williams, Impressive. Fargo City Commissioner, and I have a wife and a cat. <laughs> John Paulson, Planning Commission. Rick Bereff, Superintendent of the Fargo School District. Linda Coates, member of the Fargo School Board and Executive Director of the Fargo Moorhead Symphony. Jim Gilmore, Fargo Planning Department. Dave Capcorn, Fargo City Commission. And Brad Wimmer, Fargo City Commissioner. Stephen Hardy from BNIM. And uh, Jim Hinderocker with the Planning Department. Now that I get everybody to say their name, I want everybody to, to sign up. We want to make sure we've got a, a record of that, so I'm going to pass that around. In addition to that, Bob has some pretty neat little uh, cards here that talk about the Go 2030 uh, comprehensive plan itself, uh, about our website, our town hall, uh, basically an online blog. So we're going to go ahead and pass those around as well so everybody can grab one of those. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Stephen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jim. Um, it's really a pleasure and honor to be here. We've very much enjoyed the opportunity to get to know some folks in Fargo over the last few months. Uh, I was telling Jim on the way out, this is my first uh, positive territory above zero degree trip to Fargo, and it's, it, was, it was good when it was cold, and it's better now that it's nice. <laughs> um, just before we even get started, I want to compliment Jim and Nicole and Bob and all the planning team here who've done a really great job um, getting us a, a vast amount of information and their ability to work with us and to provide really high quality assistance has made them not only made this feel like a really good team and partnership, but has uh, advance this process a lot further, so you're, you're lucky to have them. I also want to make sure and introduce some of our local partners. Um, from SRF, Cindy and Tiffany there. Uh, Stephanie, sorry. <laughs> uh, it was a different tip. Uh, and then Eric Dodds from AE2S who will be joining us. He's a few minutes late. Um, so what we're going to be covering today is really a recap of the meeting from last night and uh, I'd like to hear from all of you that participated. Uh, we have some questions on the agenda that you can see that we'd like to go through. We're at the beginning of uh, the visioning part of this work where we're starting to balance the data that we've gathered with the vision for the community and we'll be spending the next then six months figuring out how to get from the where you are now to that vision and 
this group will be intimately involved with reviewing our progress, making sure that we're on track, acting as a sounding board for us, and uh, really helping us make sure that this is something that is implementable. The other part of your job is that once this plan is done, uh, in many ways, this committee more than any other is responsible for seeing that this is implemented. Uh, and there will be staff assigned to be doing that, but it takes more than just uh, city staff to get a plan implemented. It takes real support from the community. And so um, we were helping to build that last night, and uh, we're really hopeful that you will help carry this forward as we, as we move along. I have just a couple of slides that I'd like to show this morning. A few of them are repeats from last night for, the, for those of you that showed up, but I just wanted to give you a sense of some of what we've already been looking at. Sorry for those of you that have crane your necks. We're a few months into the process. Uh, we're shooting to have a draft of the plan by December, so that would be something for you to be reviewing. We'll be back to do a next round of community meetings. Uh, right now it's scheduled for late August. Um, so in general, it's, we're establishing a vision. We'll be back with some specific strategies based on what we've heard and then finally here with a draft plan for everyone to review. I think there are three pieces of advice or three rules that really make a successful comprehensive plan, and that is, first of all, that it needs to represent a true community vision. If it's not something that the community crafts, that the community really believes in, uh, you won't have a successful plan. And, and I think based on the online feedback that we've already gotten and the, the work that was done last night, you're well on your way to having that established. Number two is to be really thinking in an integrated way. And so that means thinking across departments at City Hall, but it also means thinking about uh, the way things are handled. Uh, how, how can a land use decision impact uh, a healthy community? How can urban design impact uh, what you do with your stormwater? And that's something that this group will be able to help us think about, and we're hopeful that our team can also start to draw some of those things together. And finally, there really needs to be a close collaboration between the government, the private sector, and the public. And in the places across the country that we've seen do really well, they've used this planning process as a springboard to launch uh, an even stronger collaboration. And we've seen in the, we spent the last few days not just doing the public meeting, but talking to stakeholders throughout your community. We've seen the roots of good collaboration across those areas already. And uh, we hope that this will be an opportunity to build them even stronger. The city staff here has been working diligently on what we call baseline reports. And they've been happening across the topics that you see uh, on your agenda. Uh, they will be, uh, we're kind of going back and forth with them right now. I think once we have those done, they'd be very interesting reading for many of you. Uh, the, the idea is that it's the, what's the current case in Fargo? and what are the things that are happening around that topic right now. So whether it's flood mit mitigation, housing in neighborhoods, transportation and infrastructure, economic development, land use, energy, healthy food and healthy lifestyles, or natural resources. We've got a very robust set of data points and uh, policy moves that have been made to, to make sure that the team is starting from the, uh, from the ground level. And I, I think uh, this has been extremely useful, not just for our team, but also for the folks that are putting these together because it really helps share information across, uh, across departments. So one of the things that was most striking to us coming from the outside was your incredible em unemployment rate, which is so low. Uh, and I'm sure that's something that you've heard a good deal about. It's something that your public is very aware of, too. We, we saw last night it coming up again and again at the tables, the, the really pride in low unemployment rate. One thing that uh, we were a little bit surprised by was the cost of transportation in Fargo. Uh, the slide that's up on the screen right now represents the median income person's dollar. Uh, and so in Fargo, uh, that median income person, uh, if you took a dollar out of their pocket, 24% of that would be going to housing. 27% of that dollar goes to transportation. And so if you compare that, uh, to other cities that people think of as being much more expensive. Your housing is, is quite affordable. Your transportation, the amount of money that people are spending on transportation is quite higher. Go ahead. Can I ask you? Yeah, absolutely. What, what's in that number? Uh, how do you get the transportation number? 
It's a, the, so the question's about how do we arrive at the transportation number, and it's a, it's a agglomeration of a lot of different factors. Uh, there's a, actually a not-for-profit that compiles it, so I, I'd be happy to share that with the group, it's, but it's not just, uh, I mean, it's, the, it's got taxes, it's got the, like, if it's a car payment, it's got uh, main, average maintenance fees, it's got all of that kind of stuff built fuel, up in fuel it. Fuel costs. Fuel costs, yeah. too, right. Go ahead. You, uh, you've got Fargo, Moorhead, and a lot of very major cities. How right. does Fargo, Moorhead compare with, say, uh, a smaller Falls, city. Right. Duluth, It's Rochester. a good question. The, you're, uh, the, that <laughs> transportation number uh, is typically higher in, a, in places where there's less uh, public transit. Now, I'd say for a community of 100, I mean, for 100,000 here in Fargo, that, you're still higher than a typical community in that category. I, I, you'd usually see, like, your, your housing is, uh, is slightly better than a community of your size, typically, I mean, for percentage of income. Uh, but the transportation number, it's very rare to see it higher than the housing number. And so uh, you, you're, even compared to a more uh, smaller communities, your transportation cost is higher. Good questions. Even that, this one? Yeah. That website, uh, Center for Neighborhood Technology, has a lot of this research on there. So if you just Google Center for Neighborhood Technology, you can see a lot of those statistics. Can I say one thing? Yeah. But the optimist view of this is then we have room for improvement. That's an area where we can. Absolutely. Uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and really, that's why we're, we're sharing that. And, and if you look at the numbers, that the, where it really gets even more staggering is as you get below median income, those percentages actually continue to grow. So you find a, play, you find a case where people are spending a, 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 I mean, you're already spending a majority on transportation and housing, but that number just gets higher and higher. So Fargo is really no different than anywhere else in the country when it comes to health. Uh, you're about right, right on average, which is not good. <laughs> um, and we heard quite a bit uh, online and in the meeting last night about ways to be providing healthier food and more active lifestyles, and that certainly seems to be an opportunity as we move forward. And I say that's why we're feeding everybody cookies today. Yeah, and... <laughs> we're going to work on that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. We should just get up and I'll make you walk around this while I'm giving the presentation. Uh, one thing that we're learning a lot more about is the connection between. Uh, the way communities are designed and the amount of exercise people get so you can actually increase activity without people really knowing it just by the way you're designing neighborhoods. And the one thing that I wanted to mention that we've really been pushing, you probably have heard this already, um, is the online Mind Mixer site. So we have a project blog that gives regular updates. We also have this Mind Mixer website. This is a screenshot of it where we've been collecting ideas from the community. This website's been up for eight weeks, something like that. Um, but without a public meeting and no real public launch, and uh, we've never seen the kind of traction that you're getting here in Fargo around uh, this kind of site. We, we checked before we came, and the site had 29,000 hits. We're, uh, we're also passing around some iPads to give you a sense of what the website is. Uh, you can even upload your ideas if you want during the meeting here. Um, 29,000 hits to the website before we came. We checked it this morning. Uh, you're about to cross the 30,000 hit level. And of those, uh, you have 5,200 original visits. So what that means is you've got about every person who's logged on has done it about six times, but you have 5,200 different people that have been to the website. The average, the other thing that's interesting about this is the average time spent on site is six minutes and 40 seconds, which I, th I think nationwide the website averages something like 15 seconds, 16 seconds. So people are spending a really long time on the site. We also think that it changed the demographics of the meeting last night. Uh, there were people that were at the meeting were pretty convinced because they'd been participating online and felt really engaged in the process and wanted to come and continue that dialogue. Uh, we had a, a much more uh, age-diverse group than you would typically have at a, at a public meeting. So these are just a 